like to talking about working around the system. I'd like to introduce our next guest, uh, uh, Gray Tan. He's from Tiny Moss, so he's, you know, come up with this really, uh, uh, you know, uh, interesting camera, and we're here to talk about. He's here to talk about how exponential change is coming and how we can harness the power of technology. Gray, thank you. Um, so, my name is Gray, and actually I'm doing a little bit of bit switch over here. So I'm not talking so much about technology. So when Gabriel actually approached me to do this talk, uh, I was doing, a, uh, we were doing this exhibit on Future of Us. So because that was Future of Us, I had this abstract idea about technology and uh, how we're going to move forward. But since this is about Future of Me, I'm actually going to bring down this uh, away from the abstract level to my personal experience in doing a startup and hopefully that will actually inspire you guys to uh, do something that you are interested in yourself. So let me just introduce a little bit about my company. Uh, I started this in 2014 called Tiny Moss. It's the world's smallest astronomy camera. So our idea is to be able to um, bring uh, astronomy to the masses uh, so that people can actually experience things that they have never experienced before. So in terms of um, the earlier part where I actually bait switch deal, the idea is that we have so much technology in our hands right now that in our smartphone over here, we actually have more technology and more computing power inside than what actually sent uh, men to the moon in the first place. But the thing is that over the past few years, you realize that we haven't been making so much of a progress in that area in terms of exploration in space. Um, and I think it's because that nowadays, uh, we no longer have that kind of um, superpower rivalry to want to uh, better each other in science. Whereas uh, nowadays we are getting a bit more comfortable and we are having this consumerist economy uh, where people actually like to consume things and that's where technology has brought us to uh, and all the technology is going to our smartphone to help us surf Facebook and things like that. But I think the problem is not that we are consumerist society. I think that it's just part of the situation that we are in. So in um, trying to in, in trying to uh, change things, what we can see as an opportunity to change things from the bottom-up approach rather than the top-down approach. And that's what we are trying to do here. Similar to how SpaceX is trying to uh, democratize uh, space travel by having their first technology in terms of relaunchable uh, rockets. So that's where we are heading towards going for the consumer side to actually move uh, technology forward. Okay, so Tiny Moss is a space imaging company. I think I accidentally said this before uh, the slide came out. So uh, anyway, this is the device that we are trying to build. Um, it is very small, it's almost pocketable. Uh, I will go through more of it in detail. Um, but I'll give you a bit of introduction about myself and uh, my journey so far. Okay. So for me, I'm 26 years old, pretty young. I just found out that a few of the speakers here are even younger than I am. Okay, uh, I graduated from NUS Faculty of Arts. I'm no science student by any measure. I didn't even take uh, mathematics when I was in junior college. So I played with my first film camera when I was 15 years old. Uh, my, uh, my sister was actually doing some kind of uh, elective in photography in NTU at that point in time. She brought home an FM2 Nikon camera and I started dabbling in it. And from that, playing with the camera, it brought me to uh, having an interest in photography and uh, I actually became a professional photographer that helped me pay through the years of university that I went through. Um, after that, in university, I gone through a few um, physics electives that re helped me rediscover my uh, interest in astronomy, uh, which actually helped me to bring out the idea that uh, I want to create Tiny Moss at 24, uh, which is to help everyone to experience uh, the night skies as I have been, uh, and I've been very lucky in this journey. So the key takeaway here is that um, interest drives knowledge. And if you're interested in something, you eventually find a way to uh, actually do the things that you want to do. And for me, that is the interest in astronomy and photography. And that allows me, an art student who is not uh, trained in mathematics or physics, to be able to uh, start a company that uh, does astronomy imaging. So I, when I started, uh, when I went to the National University of Singapore. Uh, I was very curious about uh, astronomy. I was thinking, 
is the Milky Way real and whether you can see it with your own eyes. So I was very lucky in NUS physics department, I met a good friend uh, called Leong Chi Xiang. So Mr. Leong Chi Xiang is actually my uh, teaching assistant. Uh, and he taught me all the things I know about physics and astronomy. So with his friend, uh, Mr. Remus Chua, a very famous uh, astrophotographer in Singapore, I went on to Mersing, Malaysia, just two hours drive away from Singapore, where most of us has never seen a clear uh, dark skies before. So I'm not sure why we can't see it, but under the tree, there is uh, my group of friends with very massive telescopes over there. So the problem with this image is that it was captured with this camera. I was a professional photographer. I had some of the best uh, photo equipment I could have in, uh, back then. So this camera is really uh, heavy and really expensive and very complex. And that is the same situation for any uh, astronomy equipment for, that's available on the market. So you have to have an equipment that's uh, really heavy. So the whole system is more than 2.5 kilograms expensive. Uh, most of these equipments are cost, uh, they cost thousands of dollars and they need years of experience to use. And I was a professional photographer when I first saw that uh, site and I captured that image, but I didn't have any experience in astrophotography. And that's where my uh, training in National University of Singapore uh, helped me to go through that. So what I want to do is to really shorten that learning cycle uh, and let people go out to experience things first rather than to spend years to try to find out whether they are interested in something altogether. So the idea of Tiny Moss started, uh, a simple handheld device that can be put on a small tripod, allowing you to experience the wonders of the night skies, as well as to share them with your friends and family over social media. So the, oh, the formatting went away. Okay, so the idea is that we have something really light. Uh, instead of 2.5 kilograms, a whole system, we have something less than 500 grams. Something that is affordable, rather than a few thousand dollars, uh, we have some, a system that's less than a thousand dollars. And we have something that's really easy to use, uh, that takes a few seconds to learn, rather than a few years of dedicated, dedicated knowledge in photography or astronomy. So when we first started, we wanted to make sure that it is lightweight uh, and compact, so we had to use small sensors. So when we use a small sensor to capture the image, uh, this is what we've got. This is taken in 2014 in Mersing, Malaysia. And this sensor was actually a 2007 sensor. It's not the best image possible, obviously, but uh, we were quite impressed by the fact that a sensor that is the size of my pinky's fingernail could actually start to capture some details about the Milky Way, which is what we are really setting off to do. So in 2014, we tried to look for new technologies that are available to us at that time. And we found a sensor with the exact same size, but it's made uh, brand new and we got this image. And the sensor is the size of my pinky's fingernail and the lens is this exact one over here. And we are able to capture a photo of the Milky Way even though uh, we don't have a very large DSLR setup or we don't have a scientific camera setup. And that's what we are really trying to do to make sure that uh, anyone can actually experience this for themselves. And here are some of the other image we have managed to capture. So this is an image of the moon. We are using a DSLR lens in front of this, so it's about this size. And this was actually captured just outside of this building um, near the Singapore Flyer. Uh, this image uh, is very clear and very sharp uh, compared to what you have to uh, get, what you can get from a DSLR, where you have to spend a lot more money to actually uh, achieve. So from here, you can actually look at the miniature craters inside the craters itself, and that's the kind of uh, resolution and quality we can get with small technology these days. So when we saw a bright object beside the moon, we realized that it was Saturn and we actually pointed the camera to point at Saturn. Um, you can actually get the rings of Saturn with a device this size rather than to have to spend thousands of dollars on a telescope, spend years learning about uh, declination, ascen right ascension and things like that. And to be able to go out and learn about this uh, to experience it with your friends and family. So the summary over here is that um, how play can become something serious and the formatting run again, I'm so sorry. Okay, so when I first started to play with the film camera, um, I remember there's a talk by Steve Jobs that says that 
you cannot connect the dot forward. You can only connect the dots backwards. So if you have an interest in something, go out and pursue it. When I first started with my film camera at 15 years old, there is no idea in me that I'm going to become a professional photographer. There's no idea in me that that's going to help me pay for my university studies. But that interest helped me to go through that. And when I rediscovered my interest in astronomy in, uh, in the National University of Singapore, it was purely an interest kind of thing. Uh, I was really amazed by the night skies when the National University of Singapore brought me out to Malaysia. And from that play, um, I actually managed to start out a company that I wish to help to share this experience with as many people as possible. So now that we have created this camera for you to go out and play and explore with, the question is, what are you going to make out of it next? Um, maybe you are going to be the one that's going to advance tomorrow's technology, and that's the future of you. Okay. Uh, on this note, I'm going to end my presentation. And this is a shameless plug. We are going to go for Indiegogo uh, next month. So if you subscribe, you can get the latest updates from us. Thank you very much. Hey, don't go. Okay. That's awesome. So why, why, um, why do you decide to go Indiegogo and not, for example, Kickstarter? Okay, so um, there are a few reasons, some of them not politically correct to say here. But let's just say that we started with the idea of going to Kickstarter at first because uh, most people who are into crowdfunding knows that that's the largest platform available. Um, but we were chased down by Indiegogo. They are very interested. They sent people to Singapore, gave talks. Uh, they connected with us. And when we went to Silicon Valley, they were offering us a lot of support and uh, going out of their way to make sure that we are going to succeed. And that's basically the most important reason why we're going with Indiegogo. Okay. In your journey to get there, what were the, what were the some, is there some advice you can give to us? What are the things that you encountered for someone so young? Mm -hmm. um, I'm also very young. Um, um, the, what, what are the things that you've encountered that perhaps you can pass on to us? Um, the thing is that, okay, the, the main point of my presentation is to say that if you have an interest in something, go all out for it. You never know what is going to become of it. Um, you could be inventing something um, that everyone wants in the future. Uh, and that's really the key, uh, the key takeaway from uh, my journey so far. And always be nice to people. There are a lot of people that we have met along the way that we have barely known. They really go out of the way to make sure that we succeed. Um, yeah. So um, just the other question is, how, how many in your cohort are doing similar things like you? Uh, okay. So uh, how many people in our cohort is doing things like me? So um, the thing is that I, I don't think that a lot of people in Singapore are very interested in doing startups or doing their own business. I find that a lot of my cohort people are actually, uh, unfortunately, um, trying to chase after the big jobs in MNCs and things like that, trying to become a cock in the wheel. And I hope that we can try to change that because um, that is something that will not be sustainable over the next decade or so. Yeah. It goes back to our point, if, if we had started that way, then Singapore wouldn't be come where it is today. Someone had to, people had to come up with ideas. So um, uh, this, this problem that you want to solve with your tiny moss, um, is there a, just a, I, I'm not familiar about astronomy, and also at the earlier part, I sneaked off not because you were boring. I had to go to the toilet um, because I'm older and my bladder's not functioning as well. <laughs> Too much detail. Um, so is there a market for this? Just out of curiosity. Okay, so actually, um, quite interestingly, a lot of people ask us whether there is a market for this. Uh, I guess we will find out when we launch our Indiegogo. But uh, from our market research is that um, everyone knows about GoPro and how big they are right now. Um, do you guys know where GoPro started off in terms of their target market? Okay, they, they started off from surfing. So the guy was very interested in surfing and he always wanted to take wonderful images of himself and his friends when he's surfing. And the surfing market in 2014 is actually 1.7 million people in US every year. Um, and in terms of astronomy, surprisingly, there are 2 million people who attend astronomy um, events every single year. And the problem here is that uh, the equipment is really heavy, expensive, and complex. 
So the thing is, you usually see there's one telescope and 10 people behind it. And we are really trying to target the 10 people behind that telescope. Right, yeah. okay. So you're, you're democratizing astronomy even more in some ways. Yeah. Or, or reaching out. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. So great. Fantastic.